Hey folks, and welcome back to my channel. My name is Erin McGough. I'm a filmmaker and career educator living in New York. And today we're talking about how to dress for a job interview. Okay, but first we can address this weird elephant in the room. <laughs> I am in a new space. I now lease an office space to film my show. No one knows what they're doing. If you haven't checked it out yet, please check it out. It's so much fun. I have my chair. I have my mug. I have my YouTube award back there my plant that's dying. And then the microphone, honestly, it just gets the best audio quality. Like I hate wearing the lavalier and I hate having the shotgun mic because it picks up all the New York City sounds outside. So you know what? I'm gonna use a microphone for this and if it works, it works. If it doesn't, we'll go back to something else, but I'm just, I'm just gonna try it out for this, okay? Let's just, let's, moving on. Smart casual, business casual, smart business professional casual formal. Ah, what does it all mean? I just don't, I don't, no. Please, Aaron, just tell me what clothes to put on my body to look professional in a job interview. Don't worry, I got you. Let's talk about it. So first of all, there is all these hidden rules when it comes to dressing for job interviews. And we are going to talk about all of those. If you clicked on this video though, and you have a job interview coming up, I just want to say congrats. Remember that getting a job interview is an accomplishment. That means that they liked your application. They liked your resume. They really think you could be a good fit for the role and they just want to meet you. So feel good about yourself. They are excited to meet you. I'm just happy that I got this meeting. Now we just have to make sure that you physically present yourself in a way that works in your favor. So in this video, we are going to first go through the cardinal rule of addressing for job interviews. Number two, the job interview outfit method. Number three, decoding the levels of business attire. Number four, the halo effect and why it matters. Number five, where to shop. And number six, some little tips and tricks that you might need to know. Okay, so first up, there's like this cardinal rule of dressing for job interviews. And if you know it, you know it. And if you don't, you don't. But now you gotta know because I'm telling you. It goes like this. You can't be overdressed. You can only be underdressed. Always err on the side of fancy. I don't know. Is it classy enough? Like if you have the choice between jeans and slacks, just go with the slacks. Even if you think the job is chill, just go with the slacks. Better safe than sorry. Also pro tip, this all applies to remote jobs and remote interviews. You have to make sure that you're appropriately dressed. Yes, even pants and shoes and belt and socks and everything, because not only do you need to dress up for a job interview to like look presentable, but it also will just get you in that right headspace and it'll just make you feel better about yourself when you look good. You know what I mean? And also if you're ever confused about what to wear in a job interview, you can ask the person who set up the interview. Like you can just ask them like, hey, by the way, what's the attire for the job interview? What's the attire for the company? Like what would be proper for me to wear? And that's not a weird question at all, especially in the age of like remote work where you can't really see what employees are wearing in the office. It's perfectly fine to just ask, hey, what's the attire for the job interview? Also, I just want to say that while this video will be for both gender styles, my brother Brock actually made a video that's specifically for like what men should wear in a job interview, which he can speak a lot better to because he's like a style expert and I am like very much not. So I'll link to that down in the description for all the men watching or for all the women who want to help a guy <laughs> with a job interview and what to wear. Um, I'll link to his video because he does a very good job explaining it. And also if you need just some visual inspiration, I'm a very visual person, I don't know about you, go to Pinterest and type in like smart casual, business casual, like men, women, like whatever keywords you want and you can get some good visual examples of what to wear. Okay, number two, the job interview outfit rule. So typically the best practice is to wear one step above what the employees at that company wear. So what the heck does that mean? For example, if you are applying to work at McDonald's and everybody there is wearing a uniform, then you would want to wear one step up from that, which is smart casual. If you're applying for like a teaching job where all the teachers wear smart casual, you would want to wear one step up from that in your interview, which is business casual. And if you're applying for like an office job where everybody wears business casual, you'll want to wear one step above that, which is business formal. And if you don't know what the company wears, you can always just email the person who set up the interview and just say, hey, what's the attire for the interview or what's the attire at the company? Or you can just like sleuth their Instagram and like typically just, you can tell kind of like what the vibe of the company is. And if you really are unsure, it's pretty much always safe to wear business casual or business formal. Again, you can't be overdressed, but you can be underdressed. So it's always just better to, they say dress for the job you want, you know, just wear that suit, look good because it's not going to work against you if you look like too good. You know what I mean? <laughs> okay, so next we're gonna go through those different levels of formality when it comes to professional clothing. The first rung is casual. Casual is what you wear to get Chipotle. <laughs> it can be a hoodie, ripped jeans with Birkenstocks and socks. This is, this is casual. It can be athleisure, it can be a sweatsuit. Casual is 
casual. The next step up is smart casual. Smart casual is just polished casual. So while you can't wear a graphic t-shirt, you could wear just a nice t-shirt. You can't wear ripped jeans, but you could wear nice jeans. So you're kind of just taking away that grungy part of it and you're leaving it with like this polished, nice look. So you wanna stay away from any like over logos and graphics and any like decal on the clothing. You just wanna keep it a little bit chicer. For men, this can be like a really nice quality t-shirt or like a short sleeve button down or like a polo shirt with like khakis or chinos. And for women, you know, this can be like nice slacks, like a sweater, a blouse. And if you're confused where the line is, basically you can wear chic casual, but you can't wear like athleisure. So you're just like a little bit more elevated in that chic casual space. Again, you can always look these things up on Pinterest and just like search smart casual and just see a bunch of examples. The next rung up from smart casual is business casual. Business casual means that we're a bit more elevated. Like when you think of Meghan Markle in suits, a lot of the times she's wearing business casual. For men, this can be like nice slacks or chinos with like a button down or like a sweater over your button down, a belt, you know, some nice shoes, but you don't need to be wearing like a tie or a suit jacket. Like you can wear an unstructured blazer or something on top, but like you don't need the full shebang. And for women, these things are much more loosey goosey. So I'll just give some examples on screen here. But like you could also wear dress pants, you know, some heels and a nice blouse, a business dress and some pumps. But you typically just want to have things, you know, a little dressy, like what you'd see in, in TV shows. The next rung up from business casual is business professional, which is probably the most straightforward of all the categories. And this is just, you wear a suit. So you're wearing a suit jacket, a button down tucked in with slacks, and you can be wearing a belt that you know, matches your shoes, like the whole, the whole shebang. And then for women, you know, it can also be a suit. You don't really need a tie or a belt necessarily, but you can also wear, you know, a really, really nice business dress, just something kind of structured and modest. Honestly, for women, it's just much, much less straightforward. I personally just like to wear a really nice suit with a nice blouse and some nice shoes and just make sure that everything's tailored, which we are going to talk about. You know, for me, I just like to wear a nice matching suit. The pants match the suit jacket. I wear a nice blouse tucked in and some really nice shoes to kind of give me a little bit of lift. But again, just go to Pinterest and you can get some more visuals. Next, we're going to talk about something called the halo effect. The halo effect is a psychological effect that takes place when people assume positive traits about you because of your positive appearance. It's basically pretty privilege. And it's something that we're all guilty of doing. It's just evolutionary. It's in our brains. When we see somebody who's attractive, we tend to think that they are capable and they have it together. And when we see somebody who looks more disheveled, we tend to think that maybe they just don't have it together as much. The thing is, is that you have control over this. Regardless of how well you fit into like the societal ideals of beauty, you have control over whether or not you comb your hair and brush your teeth and take a shower and smell and what you wear. You have control over all of those things. So if you walk into a job interview wearing a hoodie, smelling like smoke, not having your hair brushed, like wearing sneakers, you could be the best manager, marketer, filmmaker, whatever it is in the world, and they will either subconsciously or consciously think of you as less than if you walked in wearing a tailored suit with your hair combed and like clear eyes and smelling good. It's like you're going on a professional date. Like think about looking your absolute best, clean shaven, wear makeup if that's what you do, deodorant, Skip the cologne, okay? Just smell clean because you are clean. <laughs> okay, maybe like a little bit of perfume or cologne, but please don't overdo it. It's it's really, that's one thing I hear from hiring managers all the time. It's like they walk in, it's just like a waft of like Axe body spray and it's just like, it's distracting the whole interview. But seriously, like you're getting ready for a date, just look really, really, really nice and then just put on professional clothing and this will work in your favor. You want them to think that you are as put together as you look. That is the dream. That is the goal. <laughs> and of course, in addition to basic hygiene, it is crucial, crucial that your clothes fit you, especially if you're a guy. Now, if you're a girl, you can get away with an oversized blazer or, you know, your pants being a little long. Like you can get away with like being things being a little smaller, too big. If you are a guy, you need to get your clothes tailored to fit your body. If you walk into an interview and your pants are baggy, all bunched up, dragging on the ground, and your sleeves are too long and your shirt buttons are ripping because they're too tight, like it just, again, subconsciously communicates to the interviewer that you are just not put together. You can't go out and just get your suit tailored. And that's probably not the case. You probably are perfectly capable of doing that. You just didn't prioritize it. So again, it's, it's all subconscious. It's all subconscious bias. We just need to put our best foot forward. So take your professional clothing out of a closet put it into a box or a bag, walk down the street to your local tailor and say, can you tailor all of these things to fit my body? <laughs> and they'll probably just, you know, hem the bottom of your pants and like bring up your sleeves a little bit. It'll probably cost between like maybe 20 to 100 bucks per item, it depend totally depending on what you need done. And this will 
be one of the best uses of your time, trust me. Also, you can always learn how to sew. Like if you're like me and you're a short person and it's impossible to find clothes that fit and you're always going to the tailor and getting things hemmed, you can also just learn how to sew yourself and do it yourself. Okay, next up we are going to talk about where to shop. Like what specific stores you can shop at to buy professional clothing. Now, if you are a budget shopper, you actually have a lot of options. There's always Goodwill or thrift stores, which can actually be very fantastic places to buy professional clothing. And then there's always online platforms like Mercari, Poshmark, Facebook Marketplace. Some other great budget stores I love are like Ross, Marshalls, TJ Maxx, Kohl's. I've gotten professional clothing from all those stores. And honestly, even if you do have a bit more money, I would still recommend going to these budget stores and looking around and then using the excess that you save on a tailor. Because again, like the clothes are one thing, but making sure that they're tailored to fit your body is almost more important than what the actual clothes look like. Now, if you do have a bit more budget and you're like, Aaron, I wanna buy some staples that I'm gonna have throughout my career, like I'm ready to spend some money. For both gender styles, I would recommend J. Crew, Banana Republic, H&M, Nordstrom, Abercrombie, Express. Oh, and you know what else is cute? Old Navy. Old Navy has cute stuff and Target. Target has cute stuff too. And if you're like, Aaron, I am ready to invest in a nice suit. I'm at that place in my life where I am ready to go. Um, there's a few recommendations. So for guys, I've heard Suit Supply is awesome. And then that other company, it's called like Indochino, I think it's called. I'm sorry if I'm saying that wrong, but I know guys like that one too. And then there's always Brooke Brothers, Ralph Lauren. All those companies are fine. If you're a bit more budget, there's always like Joseph A. Bank. Again, just a reminder, if you're going with like a cheaper suit, just remember to like get it tailored and it's fine. It's fine. And for women, I personally love Ann Taylor. Great staples there. I have shirts from there like 10 years ago and they're still looking brand new today. Everlane, Cause, Theory. There are lots of good places to get suits. I personally though, my favorite suit that I ever got as a, as a woman was from H&M. I got it like 10 years ago and I still wear it. It fit me as a petite woman, like right off the rack. I never even got it tailored. Like it just fit, which is really cool. And I also got, last year I got a custom bespoke suit. She literally came to my apartment and like measured me and made me a suit. I got to pick out all the fabric and everything with a small business called Dahlia in New York City. And it was really, really nice. The founder is really nice. And it's definitely a specific style of suit. I can't tell you how special it was to have a suit made exactly for my body, especially as I'm five feet tall, like as a small woman, just to have something that's not baggy at all anywhere. Like it was almost an emotional experience just having something that like perfectly fit my body. So if you are looking to really invest in a suit, I highly recommend going somewhere where you will, will get measured, where they can create a bespoke suit for you. And nothing hits quite like putting on something that was measured for your body. It's, it's wild. <laughs> but also then you're like, I can't gain or lose any weight because then this suit won't fit anymore. Come on, here comes the airplane. There you go. Open, open into the hangar. There oh. you go. And moving on, just a few last tips for you just to serve as a little reminders when you're picking out your clothes. The first thing is that if you do buy a suit, remember to cut the tag in the back. A lot of suits come with this little like stitching and you just need to cut it. A lot of men forget to do that. They walk into an interview and for some reason, it's just this like weird thing where that they'll be like, oh, it's your first suit. You didn't cut your tag. It's dumb, but it's like a thing. So I thought I'd tell you. Another thing, pay attention to labels. Probably don't try to clean your nice professional clothing yourself. Take it to a cleaning service because if you're like me, you destroy everything in the wash and um, we don't need to do that with your nice professional clothing. <laughs> Another thing is to just go with simple colors, like no zebra stripe, no hot pink, especially, you know, if you're going to interview at like a hair salon or a tattoo parlor, or like a creative agency, like sure, maybe you can express yourself a little bit more, but it's kind of like a resume. Like you just want to look good. Like just prioritize looking flattering. An interview isn't really about self-expression and expressing your personality. It's about showing the company that you are professional and that you can do a really, really good job in the role and you are confident in that. So again, if you usually overdo it with your hair and makeup or you wear really loud colors or you wear like graphic things or like you do weird things with your, your body and your clothes, that's all fine. Just maybe for an interview, dial it back just because you don't want to give them any reason to say no to you. You just want to err on the side of safety and modesty and more professionalism. You only get one chance to make a first impression with a company, so might as well not rock the boat. Again, just look hot. Like look really, really good when you go into your interview because I strongly believe that the better you, you feel about yourself, the better you feel about what you're wearing and how you look, the more confident you're gonna be in the job interview and that's just gonna shine through you. And one last thing, a lot of people ask about, you know, piercings and tattoos. I really think 
think that's just not as much of a concern these days. Maybe if you're interviewing at like a cafe and like it's owned by like an 80 year old man who's still operating like it's 1942. Yeah, maybe he would care. But like in most industries now, people don't seem to really care. However, you do need to be aware of like read the room, like what industry you're going into. So if you're going into like corporate law, finance, like these kind of like more conservative industries, yeah, maybe take your nose ring out. But again, I just don't think it's that important anymore. I think that workplaces have become more inclusive and I just, I don't think it's, it's a huge, it's a huge problem. It's something that you should be too concerned about. Again, if you think that it's something that maybe could be discriminatory, yeah, maybe cover up your tattoos or, you know, take your nose piercing out or whatever. But I just don't think it's something that is as important as it used to be. You know what I mean? All right, y'all, that's it for today's video, but just a few quick reminders. You can't be overdressed, but you can be underdressed. Always updress the company a little bit. Being fashionable is expensive, but being stylish is free. Look really hot, like look very good. Look very attractive in your job interview, like treat it like a date, look good. And lastly, Pinterest. Really guys, I recommend Pinterest. It's a great place. You can even shop on Pinterest and like find clothes. I use it all the time for job interview stuff and it's great. Love you, Pinterest. <laughs> All right, y'all, I hope you enjoyed today's video and I'm so proud of you and I'm excited for you. There are great things coming right around the corner. Don't forget to subscribe, hit that like button and tune into my show, No One Knows What They're Doing. You can watch it right here on YouTube or you can listen to it on Spotify and Apple. And if you do, please give it five stars, give it a review. It really, really helps me out. Remember, you got this and I'll see you next time.